are here at the Bengaluru Tech Summit, looking forward to a day full of buzz and excitement. There's a lot of pavilions here representing different countries, different states, and even different academic institutions. So we are looking forward to a bunch of uh, inter-industry collaboration, and hopefully the day is able to deliver that. Myself, Professor Prasanna, I'm the uh, director of Triple Eighty Darwad. The purpose here is to give uh, train manpower in higher education space, which includes uh, bachelors of technology (B.Tech) and master degree (Master of Technology) as well as PhD programs in the area of uh, computer science, electronics, data science, artificial intelligence, and allied areas. So, as you know, uh, since it is a public-private partnership model institute. Uh, the, our charter is to work on closely with academia and as well other academia as well as industry. We are in the forefront of deep tech related uh, uh, academic programs as well as startups and supporting industry consultancy in the deep tech area. Sure. So just to elaborate on our activity to accelerate this deep tech activity, we have set up a, a separate section 8 company called Triple Eighty Darwin Research Park. Through that. We incubate companies, provide industry consultancy, also provide skilling to the working manpower. When any deep tech technology like this comes, you know, first they will be in a few metro cities, then after some time it will go into the tier two, tier three cities, just like the field of computing went. But the rate at which this quantum is growing and creating disruption in the field, we need a large manpower, human resources to handle this. So that is where, when we set up a, a center there in Tier Two cities, we are going to train the trainers first, uh, who can go and teach the uh, courses in their colleges, right. and we'll also train the undergraduate students and master master student from those region to begin with, and extending to the whole state as well as the nation. The industry requirement is quantum ready. How do you make them quantum ready to create that opportunities? Now we are going to join hands with STPI. We are going to set up a, a good uh, data center, right. which is of uh, standard level, which is there in STPI Bangalore. And along with that, a uh, lot of working spaces, co-working spaces for the maybe about 100 startups to go. I think with all those things, we are good. But I agree, see, compared to Tier 1, uh, there are certain uh, things which you have to improve, maybe it's, mm -hmm best to schools for children, the way current generation think, health facility, but they are improving continuously. And now the transportation infrastructure has improved. So with that, I think people will, but it will take another five years to really catch up. One of the things, when we create opportunities, then they would like to stay back. But now, the, as of now, the, since the opportunities are less, they would like to come to Bangalore, Bombay, Pune, like that they do. And on the other hand, now when we ask the deep tech companies in Bangalore and other abroad and ask them to set up uh, companies in the Ubli Darwad region, whole North Karnataka, they will say, where is the talent pool? Right. We are playing a central anchor role at Triple uh, Darwad to train the manpower and make it ready. They are very keen to stay back, provided they have a challenging uh, opportunities there and also career prospects are good. So now suppose in the quantum space, if I'm going to create, train the manpower, some starts up comes and hires them, or there's a quantum company coming, then they would like to stay back. So that is where, for example, Infosys has set up now, there are more than 1,000 employees are there. So that is how it is. We so want to create more manpower so that industries will come and set up. Connect, uh, so the ecosystem inside Triple is our world. In terms of R&D ecosystem, uh, and also bringing national leaders, international leaders right. of repute, making them spend some time there and giving exposure to these people and also give exposure to the upcoming deep tech area, how they should get right. trained and so all these things will help them the, essentially op uh, eye-opening. Right. One of the programs we are jointly doing with SISEC, which is our Karnataka State Center for Excellence Cyber Security, right. they wanted to have an exclusive cyber security training program for women teachers of North Karnataka. So we are joined hands with them. Next week we are conducting because the, the women force are faculty members who are teaching, want to teach in cyber security, we train them. So that is what that is the way we join hands and try to. Our Honorable Minister Prayan Targeji as head of the ITP department, and this is bent for beyond Bangalore. 
So through that we have a very lifeline to get good funds for good work. That How much of that fund is actually ah, reaching to you? No, it will reach. Uh, entire thing is reaching. See, for example, we our quantum COE is getting 18 crores from them. It's a good money from any state government point of view. Uh, for example, for the quantum proposal itself, we came and gave presentation here. United Minister, Minister, Honorable Minister came to our institute. We had interaction. Based on that, when they see uh, there is an ecosystem positively impacting to the region, they would like to support. That's how people will come forward. I think one thing is, QPI AI has come up with an indigenous quantum computer. Of course, there are many other uh, quantum computers also have come up. So we have signed an MOU with them. We have to see how, you know, uh, depending on the terms and conditions of the government of Karnataka, since it is the funding agency, based on that, we should see how, how we are going to engage them. One is, you know, uh, they have set up the quantum computing facility in their company here. Right. Uh, we are thinking whether similar facility can be set up there so that you now all North Karnataka will benefit. Whether in the real or virtual fashion or something, we have to see. In the deep tech, pharma, sec health sector, we have, uh, there are demos available. That is one vertical we are seeing. Semiconductor is another thing uh, where uh, we have, our students have uh, no, uh, uh, taped out a chip coming out. And uh, the space tech, we have participated where uh, our students in that uh, uh, drone development without uh, GPS. They have come up with a third in the national level. Now we are also thinking of entering into the space sector area. Now today government of Karnataka has raised the state policy. Yes. We want to contribute there also. Only thing is we have to closely work hand in hand with industry on the latest technology to offer courses, training, development. Then it will help. I am president of uh, IESA, India Electronics Semiconductor Association and SEMI. India. SEMI is a global uh, industry body having 3,500 members and IES is India's electronic semiconductor body about 400 members. Together as a India and a global counterparts, we are working towards creating the ecosystem in India mainly for semiconductors and semiconductor led electronics. And this is going on from IES perspective almost about 19 years and this transformation is not incremental but it's a leapfrog. Because we never had a semiconductor plants, now we have several semiconductor plants, those are coming up. We never had the fabulous related ecosystem in the country, which is also developing. And semiconductor has become a buzzword all across India. And thanks to some of the people, media guys like you, those are proliferating this sector and writing a lot of articles. The second shift, what I wanted to convey you is the Many Indian corporates now are showing interest to invest in this sector. So, you know that Tata, Keynes, uh, Sirma, HCL, CG Power, Murugappa Group and more. So, a lot of Indian companies are coming forward to set up the manufacturing and design activities, which was not there three to five years ago. So, these two things are pulling apart and tying it together that the industry is in a way. Uh, you mentioned that um, the plants are announced but there is no production. It takes time. The semiconductor wafer manufacturing foundries, they take three to five years for complete construction and ramp up. <laughs> Same is with the, or similarly for OSATs, that is the assembly test packaging. It takes one year to two year to construct and get it operational to the mass production. And our journey has started only recently. I would call it is not only buzzword, it is a reality. There is a scale which has to happen surely. We are not yet scaled up. It will happen sure. But today India is very capable and very confident. And not only these two, the global companies are putting trust on India. So you would see that the global companies like Samsung or Apple, they have sizable operation and they export from India. India never had the semiconductor manufacturing except one plant of SCL. Right. We are. So we do not have the technology or know-how to mass manufacturing of the semiconductor in the country. That's the biggest gap. When we started manufacturing five, seven years ago, it was just pure play assembly. Everything you bring outside, assemble, assemble. press fit, yeah. supply. After that, some components get manufacturing locally. There is new component scheme which is adding up further value addition. It's progressive. Similarly, it will happen in semiconductor side as well. India need to develop the process, know-how and the technology 
to make it self sustainable because perpetually for everything that is 100% we cannot stay dependent on the global technology right? somebody somebody will pull the rug and then everything stop yeah. i'm right? considering the you know uh, sorts of technical uh, geopolitical tensions that right. are going on uh, you know people use this as a weapon action yeah which is right so that's where it is india need to parallelly build the r&d activity i think it will take long time even uh, china example which you are citing they took decades before they are at a particular stage and the other countries like japan or us they were working like 30 40 50 years actually before they could reach some particular stage so india is still can do much faster now because there is a strong focus but um, it will be important that the various programs and projects those are announced by the government those are implemented and i will tell you how it is going to work out but can so our internet so there are five things five key policies right now which central government has announced the first policy is on a semicon india program that supports right. the manufacturing of the large scale semiconductor in the country and osi many second policy is about the design link incentive creating the fabulous ecosystem so you do the product design and india product creation once it is designed you get it manufactured either in india fab or outside no problem the third important thing is the pli production link incentive for electronics manufacturer right so if you do electronic manufacturing you do the production link incentive electronic manufacturing is increasing and they will consume locally made other raw materials and inputs the fourth policy is about the electronic component manufacturing scheme ecms which was announced 6 months ago and 2 months ago it got closed and already has 17 plus 7 24 projects are approved yeah 12000 okay, crore whatsapp projects are already approved yesterday yesterday i was in yesterday. delhi actually yesterday right when the uh, second tranche of 17 projects were yeah. approved 17 and uh, honorable union minister mr ashwini vaishnav van jitain prasad the mos was there i was uh, part of the event there actually so this is done so that's the fourth one and a fifth one is a rdi research and development research. policy no. which was announced by honorable prime minister and they launched it just two yeah. weeks ago